In today's program, a Thai government agency upgrades its forecast of foreign arrivals for this year. Climate groups say Thailand's recent pledges are critically insufficient, and 15 pilgrims in Myanmar drown on their way to J. A. Ikne Pagoda. Details on these headlines coming right up. Choose your trip to your favorite island with Five Star Marine. Go to Five Star Marine Phuket dot com. Happy Monday, everyone, and you're watching Thailand News today. I'm Natty, and I'm sitting in for Jet Gunther this evening, bringing you the latest headlines in Thailand and beyond. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the news. Two Australian men who allegedly conspired to smuggle more than 300 kilograms of heroin from Thailand to their home country were recently arrested by the Australian Federal Police. AFP describes one of the suspects as one of the nation's most significant organized crime threats. Back in July, Thai customs officials at the port in Chonburi searched an ongoing sea cargo container destined for Queensland and found 314 kilograms of heroin hidden in paint drums. Following the drug seizure, Thailand's Office of the Narcotics Control Board announced that Thai authorities contacted the Australian embassy and planned to investigate the network behind the operation. Thai authorities made a series of drug busts and the AFP recently announced the arrest of two men who allegedly arranged the import of heroin in July. Police say a 38-year-old man allegedly conspired with a 41-year-old man using encrypted communication platforms. Both men are charged with conspiring to import a commercial quantity of a border control drug into Australia, which carries a maximum penalty of life imprisonment. Thailand's Fiscal Policy Office has increased its 2021 tourist arrival forecast to 200,000 by the end of the year, a slight increase from the previous number of 180,000. Following Thailand's reopening in November, the country welcomed 50,000 international arrivals, taking the total number of foreign arrivals this year to 100,000. Most of those were from the U.S., followed by the United Arab Emirates and Germany. While the FPO predicts that 2022 will bring 6 million foreign tourists to the kingdom, but if Chinese nationals are permitted to travel again, that estimate will increase to 7 million. The FPO says Thailand's post-pandemic recovery will be driven by exports, and government spending is expected to grow by 1% this year and 4% during 2022. Climate Research Group Climate Action Tracker says Thailand's pledges at the recent COP26 summit in Glasgow, Scotland are critically insufficient. A report issued by the group has slammed the targets that were agreed, saying Thailand, like most other countries, has not improved on its goals in any way that will make enough of a difference. The report says the pledges made will not do enough to stop global temperature rising beyond the critical threshold of 1.5 degrees Celsius, as stipulated in the Paris Agreement. According to a report, Thai environmentalists agree. Krisida Bunchai from Thai Climate Justice for All has also questioned the government's pledges on greenhouse gas reduction. He says all stakeholders must make an effort to increase their carbon emission cuts from 40 percent to 50 percent to bring the country in line with the climate change recommendation and meet the country's carbon neutral goal by 2050. The CAT report also criticizes the government's plan to switch to natural gas to reduce the country's dependence on coal. The group says doing this simply delays any move to clean energy and further undermines efforts to decarbonize. The Bangkok Post reports that the group have also criticized Thailand for not signing up to any of the key initiatives announced at COP26, Global Coal to Clean Power Transition Statement, and the Declaration on Accelerating the Transition to 100% Zero Emission Cars and Vans. While COVID-19 resulted in Thailand's overall economy suffering, a few selected industries actually saw impressive growth. The vending machine business is booming, go figure. And with demand rising, companies like Sun Vending Technology are experiencing renewed popularity. The company reported massive growth this year and is making plans to expand. 
Senior Vice President of SVT revealed that with people's need to limit contact with others, vending machine usage has surged and SVT reported an 11 percent year-on-year growth rate in just the first nine months of 2021 for a total of 1.45 billion baht in sales. He explained that pre-COVID vending machines accounted for around 5 to 10 percent of e-payment transactions. Now that number is up to 50 percent in some places, he went on to say that the company wants to expand its presence from 14,600 vending machines to 20,000 by 2023. The majority of these machines will be put in factories and logistics centers. And now for a quick message from our sponsor. Isn't it time for you to come back to the islands? Phuket is open and it's never looked better. Choose your trip to your favourite island with Five Star Marine. Go to fivestarmarinephuket.com. Following the announced merger of the two of the largest mobile phone network service providers in Thailand, DTAC and True, regulators are calling on the companies to discuss their business plans, which would likely change the telecom industry and dominate the market. DTAC's parent company, Norway's Telenor Group, is meeting with True's parent company, Darun Pokapan Group, to discuss plans to merge the two subsidiaries DTAC is worth roughly 98 billion baht and has around 19.3 million mobile subscribers, while True is worth around 147 billion baht and has 32 million subscribers. Their competitor, Advanced Info Service, known as AIS, has 43.7 million subscribers, making Thailand's largest mobile operator. The two companies are likely to form a joint venture based on a share swap arrangement as True is owned by CP to the tune of 50 percent and China Mobile to the tune of 18 percent and Telenor owns a 65 percent stake in DTAC. At least 15 pilgrims have drowned and at least three more are missing after trying to cross a flooded causeway in Myanmar. According to an AFP report, the incident occurred near the town of Tambu Zayat in the state of Mon. The victims were among thousands of religious pilgrims who were attempting to reach the Jaigne Pagoda. The Buddhist temple lies around three kilometers off the coast and was being used for a religious festival. A local official said some of the pilgrims died trying to cross the four-meter-high causeway when the tide was too high despite warnings from the officials. Subsequent overcrowding with people pushing and shoving led to additional drownings, with emergency responder Ko Kyo Tu confirming that 15 bodies have been transported to hospital, but there are still at least three others missing. According to a local resident, there was a lack of safety markers on the causeway, making it difficult to navigate. And that wraps up our report for today. If you'd enjoyed it, you'd love the videos that just popped up. So check them out to continue watching our other shows. Thailand News Today will be back tomorrow with Jet Gunther. Meanwhile, you're now up to date on the Tiger. Bye for now.